I've just finished listening to Pete Carroll's interview on 710 Seattle Sports. I don't want to write about it. I don't want to listen to it again and transcribe it. So I thought I'd just come on, do a very quick video and give my thoughts on it. I felt that that was a pitch to ownership. I thought everything about what he was saying was a dress rehearsal for the meeting that he's going to have with Jody Allen, presumably Burke Cold, coming up this week. I was completely wrong and will hold my hands up about my thought last night that Pete Carroll was coming to the end and that he looked like he was perhaps a bit emotional and very relaxed in the game and that he was, he was, you know, that in the next few days we would hear that he's just going to retire. I think based on what we heard there, nothing could be further from the truth. He fully intends to carry on. And if there is going to be a change, it's going to have to be instigated by ownership. So we'll see what happens. If that was a pitch, if that's the kind of thing that he is going to say to Jody Allen and Bert Cold, it was completely inadequate. Just no answers for any of the issues that are wrong. You know, it was all down to being young. They just have to do a better job defending the run. They just have to do a better job running the football. You know, in one breath, he will say that the team is really talented, heading somewhere, that they've got something going and that unlike other teams, you can believe in the future. And then in the next breath, he's asked about why are you so bad in the trenches? And he's like, oh my word, we've given up 200 yards a game in the rushing game for the last month of the season. And we're nowhere near where we need to be in the run. And then these things just completely contradict. How can you be so confident that team's heading in the right direction and be honest about some, some things that are not just minor issues here? That they, this is You cannot win at a serious level in the NFL if you are as bad on run defense as this team is. And that's and he's talking about going into the offseason, he's got to coach better and he's got to get his coaches prepared better and they're going to do all these things. Well, 12 months ago, they were going into the offseason talking about fixing the run and they spent all offseason talking about fixing the run. They spent loads of money in free agency. They were very aggressive in everything that they did. They had a huge draft class again, focusing training camp about fixing the run and they couldn't get it done. So what's going to be different 12 months on, having just seen the same thing happen? They were even ranked worse than they were last year versus the run. So the, another year of, of just saying, well, we've just got to get it right. No, you, you need to have some serious answers as to how they get this right. And saying things like, just got to coach better. That to me feels like he is going to go into that meeting and saying, look, keep everybody together, run it all back and have another go. Now, the temptation with Seahawks fans will be to hear all of this and then just assume that nothing is going to change and that because Pete Carroll has said all of this stuff that it's going to carry on. I don't think that's necessarily true. I think ownership are going to have their say and they're going to uh, try and dictate a little bit of what happens here as to whether they're going to either make him make some coaching changes or whether they are going to make him move on if he's not willing to make some adjustments in any that he's not comfortable with. So I still think there's room for things to happen here. But everything he was saying... It just felt a little bit deluded when he was asked, um, is, there a, is the team closer to winning a Super Bowl than they were a year ago? And he said, absolutely, yes. I mean, that's blatantly not true. At the very least, they're on a par with where they were last year. They're nine and eight last year, nine and eight this year. Last year, they only got into the playoffs because Green Bay blew a game against Detroit on the final day of the season. This year, the only difference being that they didn't blow the game against the Bears and they won the Packers going to the playoffs and the Seahawks aren't. So they're in virtually the same position with the same problems just a year on, and unlike last year, they don't have a top five pick to be excited about. They don't have two first round picks and two second round picks. They have one first round pick and no second round picks. They are currently, as things stand, according to over the cap, nine and a half million in debt in effective cap space for next year. So there are sig major, significant changes that are coming around the corner. And this is what I wrote about last night. You know, this is not a run it back roster, you, you are now looking at this thing and saying, you have to be quite aggressive with cuts. You are going to have to fill holes probably on the cheap. There is a bit of a reset, even if it's just a mini reset coming this off season. And if Carroll only has one more year on his contract, bringing him back next year to oversee this feels like just a complete waste of time. I, the man just listening to the way he speaks has got no answers for the problem. It's just a lot of hot air. It's just a lot of positive mumbo jumbo. Like just, well, we've just got to get back. We've just got to do this. And you can see that we're young and you can see that we're... And he was talking about the positive of the team. He says things like, we've got a great special teams. It's like, yeah, but, you know, no one's going to go into the off season 
warmed by the play of the special teams. You know, when he was talking about how excited he was, oh, I'm so excited. Bobby Wagner set a record for tackles. He set a record for tackles because it's no good up front that he's just collecting tackles because, I, as he has done for a long time now, because the, the defensive front is no good. Then he says, oh, Michael Dixon got a 50-yard punt average. Oh, great. Well, that'll keep me excited through the next few weeks while the other teams are playing playoff games. They thought that the punter had a 50-yard average. And then he mentioned Jason Myers as kicks. And you think, oh, is this where we're at now? Is this all we have to be excited about as Seahawks fan? He's complimenting Jamal Adams for coming back from his injury. I mean, it's pretty pretty clear now the way that he speaks about Jamal Adams, the fact that he has gone to bat for Jamal Adams at every single level, especially over the last few weeks. That Pete Carroll, to me, it seems, was the major instigator for major player on that trade. He's a major supporter of J Jamal Adams within that franchise, and he's desperate to see this work out because he's put so much into it. That's what I would say from that. And just listening to everything about it, it was a thoroughly unconvincing interview, which did nothing to make me excited. If you are convinced by that, then I, I just suggest do yourself a favor and reflect on what you're actually being told. You are just being told positive buzz, buzzwords. It, it felt like a man whose complete sole focus and aim is to stay employed and is just saying things that don't chime with reality in order to retain his position. That was the complete gist of what I got from that interview. And it gave me no hope for next year. I don't want to watch another season like this. And if things just stay the same, that's exactly what we're going to get. Now, I do think that Jody Allen is going to have a say in this. And I think that Bert Cold will. And I, I'm, John Schneider may even be given his, giving his opinion on this. And he may feel it's, I don't know what John Schneider feels. I don't think he's going to throw Pete Carroll under the bus, but I think he's going to have to, I hope that he will be honest about this, about where this team is and, and, and what they've been doing. The reports on Sunday before the game against Arizona said that the situation would be evaluated. There has not been any talk about Carroll definitely coming back or anything like this. It, it's impossible to imagine that nothing's going to change, that both coordinators will come back and Carroll and they'll just give it another go. I mean, that would be so complacent of this ownership and would kill any enthusiasm that I have for the 2024 season before the 2023 actual NFL season has even finished. So I still think there is time. There is no rush. That's the important thing to remember. There's no rush here. They couldn't, inter if, if, if Dan Quinn's their guy, or even if it was Mike McDonald or somebody like that, they can't interview him for a couple of weeks anyway. So there's no mad rush to have everything resolved today. We heard Pete Carroll say, they had no intention of trading Russell Wilson. And he was saying that right up until the point. He was saying that at the Combine, right before the trade actually happened. Like days before the trade happened, they had no intention of trading Russell Wilson. So what Pete says today doesn't necessarily mean it's what's going to happen. Just because Pete says he intends to carry on, just because Pete says he thinks they've got a great team and that they're going to turn a corner and they're just young and they just need a little bit more development, we can see, or those of us who are willing to be honest, can look at this team and go, there is not much to be optimistic about at all here. And there's no reason to be optimistic they're going to change the run defense or that this coaching staff, these coordinators are going to turn this around. There's no reason to believe that. And it's just whether ownership share that view that many of us have or whether they are inclined to stick with Carroll and move on. I don't think anything's been decided in that regard yet. But hands up, I, was, I thought yesterday that Carroll was coming close to the end with his body language and the way that he was you know, talking and looked and everything like that. And they looked a bit emotional at the end of the game. I suggested that it looked like he was coming to end. I got that completely wrong. It's clear from what he said today that at least as of now, he intends to carry on if it's his choice. So it's up to ownership. And that's what I'm clinging to. This is a big moment for Jody Allen and Burt Colt. I appreciate there are some Seahawks fans out there are quite happy to carry on. I am not of that mind frame. And I don't need to, you to tell me um, that, you know, insulting things because I have a different opinion to you. Um, that's my opinion. I'm well within my rights to have it. And a lot of Seahawks fans have those opinions. And I'm intrigued to see what happens over the next few days. But yeah, a, a thoroughly unconvincing interview from Pete Carroll. Taught, it sounded very deluded in some of the things he was saying. And I don't think he's a deluded person. I just think that was self-preservation. I think he was saying what he is going to say to Jody Allen to keep his job. So now it's over to Jody Allen and Burt Cold. They made a, a change. 
in coach in Portland after a run of seasons that did not lead to success. And long-standing coach departed by mutually departed. Mutual was the word used when the Portland Trailblazers coach was fine in 2021. They traded Russell Wilson. So they've been willing to make big calls in the past. Are they going to make a third one now with Pete Carroll? I sincerely hope so, because I want to believe in the Seahawks team again. And if they just run it back for this year, I'm going to have no reason to believe in this football team. And I think a lot of people will feel exactly that way. So over to you, Alan. Over to you, Cold. Over to you, Schneider. Let's see what the next few days bring. But that was a really unconvincing conversation with Pete Carroll earlier today.